Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and in this lesson I'm going to show you 20 licks from Stuff Smith. Now, if there's a fiddler more different from Stefan Grappelli, then Stuff Smith is he. He was an African-American fiddler busy in the 1930s and 40s, and he had a much more punchy and raw approach than Stefan Grappelli, and there's an excitement and energy to his playing that I really love. And uh, because he doesn't have this beautiful tone that Grappelli has, he's a lot less well known to the general public, which is a real shame. I think all jazz violins should have a certain element of Stuff Smith in their playing. So I'm going to run through 20 different licks that he often used. Now, simplicity, repetition and energy were three things that he was really into. And also punchy syncopation. So lick one is just that. So it's after the beat, one, two, three, four, one. So it's a B flat on the fourth finger, one, two, three, four, one. It's played four times, it's played down at the heel and it's played hard. One, two, three, four, one. I'll show you how you can repeat that a few times. Now, a similar lick, but played with parallel fifths, which means the same finger played across two strings next to one another. So we're now playing a D flat on the A string and the finger, the third finger is going across the next string up to give you an A flat. So again we're punching down on the, the offbeat, one, two, three, four, one. Uh, lick three, another repeated lick. We're on a D flat on the fourth finger on the E string. So that's the note, and we're going to slide it down each time. Now let's hear all three of those together. Syncopated notes work really well if you play them not at the beginning of the bar, but before the bar. So if you put them before the bar line, if we were going to count in one, two, one, like that. Uh, let's just try that. Notice the wide vibrato, that ends a lot of the phrases. It's kind of crazy, but I love that. Right, here's lick five. One, two, three, four, one. So here we go, starting on a D flat, with an A flat above it. Sliding up a semitone, one. Hear this one on uh, the end of Lullaby of Broadway. One. Let's just hear that with the chords. Another lick is parallel fifth with a chromatic descending run. So we're doing. Parallel fifths, one, two, three, four, one. And uh, this works well over the bridge of this number on over D7 and G7. Let's just hear that. You 
can hear that there's a great deal of dissonance with a lick like this and that's something Stuff Smith was really into. So you, you set up a certain amount of logic with your first and your last notes uh, but what happens in between <laughs> is pretty much uh, open to the gods. You can hear this one on his version of It Don't Mean a Thing uh, with Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, all of these are um, easily accessible YouTube videos by the way. Um, now here's a, another parallel fifths lick and over a B flat we're playing a B natural and an F sharp above it and that's a really weird thing to do. So we're trilling over a B flat. <laughs> Let's see what that sounds like. Fifth, he was also into octaves, which is your first finger and your fourth finger playing an octave apart. It's not easy, but if it's slightly out of tune, then to be honest, in this raucous style, it's not so important. So we've got a lick. Um, adventurous and although you wouldn't class him as a bebop player he did work with people like Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker and, um, and so he picked up a lot of stuff from them and turning a B flat chord into a B flat diminished was something he was quite happy to do one he's basically playing that's B flat diminished as opposed to so he's, doing, he's making that substitution. Let's just see what that sounds like. Here's another descending chromatic lick. Uh, this time single notes, starting from a B flat. If you don't know fingering for chromatic scales, it's worth uh, learning it. So I'm going 4, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, open, 4, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, open. So if you, it, it's difficult to work out chromatic on the fly, so it, it really is worth spending a bit of time uh, learning uh, fingering for chromatic scales. Now here's another chromatic lick and this is going up and down. So we're starting on D, fourth finger, open, and we're slurring. substitutions were uh, to me pretty unfathomable. Over an F chord he would do this, upper semitone up to F sharp with a C sharp above it, above it. Let's hear that with the chord, it's really wacky. interesting lick that he did uh, a lot was over a 251 and if we take the C minor 7 to F7 to B flat um, if we start on a C note octaves so that is the root of the C minor 7 
Over the F7 we slide up a semitone and that note, that note now is a sharpened fifth of the F which is pretty weird and then we go up another semitone and we're ending on the B flat chord and the B flat note. So we're going from a safe note to a really dangerous note to a safe note. Let's see what that sounds like over the 251. same, not going up but going down. So we're now going to start in second position and we're going to go down. So we're going again from the root of the C minor 7 to the um, flattened fifth of the F to the uh, third of the B flat, to the root of the B flat, sorry. So. That's one you can use a lot. It doesn't have to be done with the octaves, it works nicely just the single notes as well. Um, he was good at doing quotes. Uh, quotes is where you drop a little piece of a totally inappropriate tune into a piece. And um, Sailor's Hornpipe or the Irish Washerwoman or Yankee Doodle Dandy, that kind of thing, is what you like to, to slip in. I'll just uh, try doing this. He had a, um, there was a song in, I think the 40s, or might be in the 30s, uh, called Salt Peanuts. And that was the, the, the important lick. It was octaves. Salt Peanuts, Salt Peanuts. And uh, that was a lick in itself, but he would like to take it up <laughs> in semitones, which is pretty wacky. going down. So he wasn't afraid of playing notes which were well outside uh, the normal <laughs> jazz theory. You can hear this one on his version of Honeysuckle Rose. Another favourite of his was um, a descending roll type of pattern. That kind of thing. Finally, here's an ending lick. Uh, again, ending in a very strange place. So we've got... Um, that would be fairly standard to end on B flat. But he's going up a semitone and ending on a C with a G above it. Which is a, uh, a ninth chord. Let's see what that sounds like at the end of the sequence. enjoyed this. Um, if you're a subscriber, send me an email. I'll send you a copy of all of these licks. And I do recommend that you listen to some of the recordings, uh, the original recordings that I've uh, referred to. Uh, I'll play you out um, with a couple of times around this sequence, which has incidentally been I Got Rhythm. Um, and um, I'll play a selection of uh, crazy licks over it. 
Hope you enjoyed this. See you again soon.